Hello everyone, my name is Paul Third, and this week on Mixing Wednesdays we are going to be continuing on from the Harrison um, channel strip video that I did a few weeks back, I did very very well. I do suggest you watch it if you want to hear like a shitty <laughs> Cockney accent, I do kind of go on a little bit of a skit that people liked. Um, and long story short, the video was basically talking all about how the Harrison channel strip is marketed as an analogue sounding plug-in channel strip, but at the core and in reality it is just a standard clean digital linear EQ. And from that video, many people messaged me asking me about like the differences between like an analog and digital EQ in terms of like what an analog emulation should look like. So in a sense, it's going to be a plug and doctor tutorial kind of, but more about looking into um, analog emulations and analog non-linearities and how certain plugins have managed to recreate those non-linearities and how some plugins have basically just decided not to do that at all, been lazy as shit and just marketed the plugins completely um, as clean linear digital EQs that you can get elsewhere. Let's get right into it. So first, understanding linear digital EQs. What is a linear EQ? Very, very easy, okay? If you want to find a linear digital EQ, all you need to do is load Waves F6, Waves Q10, FabFilter Pro Q3, Equilibrium, like most of your stock um, EQs, the Logic stock plugin, um, the Reaper stock plugin, uh, Slate Infinity EQ, stuff like that. That's unbelievably clean. No harmonics whatsoever. There are no variances at all in left or right. There is no variances in gain. What you tell that plugin to do is what it's going to do. And then that brings us on to non-linearities, right? Which is analog. Now, the reason that you get non-linearities in analog gear is because it's not digital, right? It's not code, okay? It can't really be mathematically precise because there are variables. There's tolerances, right? And those tolerances can come from the components. It could come from um, impedance matching. Um, it can come from the variance in transistors. It can come from um, many different factors. Your signal path. Your, there's like, I think about an, a piece of analog gear. Your signal is being passed through all these transistors, resistors, transformers, um, capacitors, um, input and output jacks. You've got impedance. You've got power supply. There's so, so, so much stuff. You've got tubes as well. You know, you've got all of these kind of different variables that can go into an analog device. And that is why just running your signal through analog gear can change the sound. You're not going to get a null because, again, you've got THD in there, you've got harmonic distortion, you've got noise in there. There's going to be non-linearities, right? So in terms of, like, if you put um, just a standard straight signal into Waves F6 or FabPult or Pro Q3 or stock digital linear EQ, and it's not doing anything, it's going to null. And again, I've showed it in other tests that it's going to null because your signal remains absolutely linear. So what you put in is what you get out. And the only things that change is what you tell it to change. With an analog, it's different because you have non-linearities due to the components of the analog signal. Your signal being passed through all of these analog components, then through all of these components, then back out again. So in nearly, I think, nearly all analog EQs, there is some form of non-linearity. And to show this off, okay, and to show this kind of pass through, right? I'm going to use Acoustica because Acoustica use convolution, right? To me, it's the best example um, in this video to kind of show you. Now, for anybody that doesn't know how kind of plugins are made, very, very quickly, you have plugins that are algorithm, okay? So they're coded and you have convolution, which is what Acoustica do. So Acoustica use um, convolution, which takes impulse responses of every single move that you make. Think of it as snapshots of the hardware. Okay, so every time you make a move, it's a different impulse response, it's a different snapshot of the hardware. So it's for me, it's the best way of looking at what the kind of plugins, the algo plugins should look like because it's a snapshot of the linear frequency responses of the hardware at loads and loads and loads of different settings. So in this video, I'm going to compare Acoustica Cream versus the Waves um, RS56, which is their curve bender. Waves Abbey Road, okay? Vintage analog sound, right? From the 50s. It was made in the 50s. So you, you, you are going to expect tons and tons and tons of non-linear behaviours. There's going to be tons and tons of non-linearities in this hardware, especially if you think 1950s. So first off, we'll load Acoustica Cream, um, which is Convolution, okay? And um, they have sampled... There's an, I think it's an Italian studio. Um, I think it's a master in the studio. And they've actually got EMI... Um, TG12345 consoles, which are still classed as curve benders. So we can kind of actually see 
what the impulse responses looked like and what the non-linearities running through the consoles, the mic pre's, the line pre's, the EQ's as well, just the non-linearities and the colour um, that these things have visually, okay? There'll be no audio examples, this is just understanding from a visual um, aspect what you're looking at when you're in Plugin Doctor. So first off, as you'll see, it's completely linear. The reason that is, is because the non-linearities are in the pre's, okay? So in the pre's, you've got the line, you've got mic, and then you've got tube, okay? So they're all kind of variations um, of the consoles. So as you can see, as soon as you activate one of the pre's, um, there is, again, non-linearity in the line, there's non-linearities in the mic, and there's also non-linearities in the tube. There's more non-linearities uh, in the custom kind of linear frequency response of the tube console. That is not linear, okay? Uh, you can tell that that's not linear. You're not going to find that out of any clean digital linear EQ like um, Fab Filter or like Waves F6 or anything like that, okay? Now, to prove this, what I'm going to do is um, I'm kind of going to do this, I'm kind of going to speed this up. So I've got Waves F6, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match the curves just of the pre, just of the non-linearities of the pre. And as you can see, I've <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that easy. Um, I, and I actually need to use every band of Waves F6. I've got to use all six bands just to get the non-linear response of the priest. Now, as you can see, I've got to use different bands, different cues, and even though I'm able to get close, I still can't get it. And many people will look at that and go, wow, they're going to sound pretty close, right? Because again, the curves are pretty much matched. Now, let's have a look at the phase. Just because the curves are pretty close doesn't mean that the phase is going to be right. Um, now, we all know that phase plays an issue in terms of um, differences in sound, okay? We know this. So even though the curves are matched, I can't get the phase to align. So even though the curves are close, the phase isn't. Where if you have a linear digital EQ and you match the curves nearly perfect, the phase is going to also be uh, nearly absolutely bang on, as I'll show you later. So as you can see, it's very, very, very difficult to get a linear plugin to completely match with a non-linear style EQ. It's very, very difficult to do. And that's just the pre. So how about we start using the EQs? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, again, just as I'll sped up, so I'll start using some EQs, start doing some boosts, and then what I'll try and do is I'll try and then match, um, again, try and get the uh, Waves F6 to match the curves. It took me ages. I had to like adjust the cues to go back, adjust cues, change gain, move frequencies about. It's really, really, really difficult. And even still, again, using <laughs> every band possible, again, I was able to get kind of close, again, mucking about with all these Q factors, but still, I still I can't get it perfect. So whilst it gets close, and that's generally the closest I could get with fucking six bands, for God's sake. I can't do it. I can't do it. And again, if we check the phase, again, the phase is off. I can't not get the phase. And what makes it even harder is that there's even more non-linear behavior in the forms of the input section. So in terms of how hard you drive the unit. So as we all know, again, again we're using analog emulations, how you kind of abuse input or how hard you go into a lot of analog devices will create more harmonic distortion. So there is non-linearities with the harmonic distortion as well and the, the behavior of driving the unit harder. Not even spoken about the tolerances of consoles. So acoustic sample the, um, the actual EMI console desk. And if you think about that the non-linearities come from the components in each part, right? And that every single module of a console right, was handmade, right, handmade, there is a massive, massive, massive human tolerance that's going to be in there. So, as you can see, there are very, very slight differences, but there are slight differences. There are slight differences in the low end at different parts of the frequency spectrum. In the tube console, you can see, again, look at the massive difference in high end on that. Again, they, I think they just sampled certain channels that were so different from one another. So, in a sense, that's how analog looks, and that's, in a sense, how analog emulations should look if you've properly emulated the plugin. So let's take, now this is fun, I love doing this now, let's take the Waves RS-56. Again, Waves modelled the exact Abbey Road. They were in Abbey Road, right? They've got an Abbey Road on the faceplate. 
Steve, I'm pretty sure Steve worked in there at the time. You know what I mean? Analog would have sounded digital. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Moved on to bigger and better things. You know what I mean? And it's what it is. It's what it is. All right. So Harrison wasn't the first person <laughs> to invent analog, but he sounded digital, right? They weren't the first people to do it. And I'm going to show you, if you're in Plugin Doctor, you can tell if the plugin is a good analog emulation or it's not, or it's just a completely standard digital linear EQ. So here is the plugin. Really, really simple, right? You've got your bands and you've got your different Q factors, okay? Again, they've got kind of different terminologies for it, but they're kind of set um, Q factors, okay? So as we can see, we've got a low band, we've got um, a mid band, and we've got a high band, okay? We've got three different bands. So as I've said, obviously, right, there, you would imagine there would be different um, tolerances in here. So for example, um, sharp, blunt, medium sharp, okay, you would imagine that the Q factor would be slightly different, wouldn't you? You'd imagine it'd be slightly different, and there'd be these little tolerance. So let's just start boosting with the EQ, okay? I'll pick, um, like, sharp, medium, blunt, we'll just pick some set, some Q factor settings, and we'll just start boosting. So as you can see, there is quite a big difference, and that'll look very familiar to you, okay, because you would have used clean linear digital EQs, countless, hundreds, thousands of times probably. And if you noticed, there is no non-linear frequency response just running through the plugin. There's nothing. There's nothing. The only, all you could do with this plugin is change the EQs. That's all you could do is boost and cut. That's it. And change the Q factor. That is it. It's completely linear. So what I've done is I've already kind of got a preset set up just to kind of show you, like what I did with the Harrison, that once you know what the Q factor is, all you need to do is save a preset and that's it. You've got you've got this plugin, right? So as you can see, I've saved it. So what I'm now going to start to do is I'm now going to start engaging the bands, okay? And as you can see, I can perfectly match the curves with Waves F6 because the Waves RS56 is completely linear. There's no non-linearities there. It's as simple as getting a set Q and it is that, see that set Q is the same set Q for all three bands, low, mid, high, it's the same Q factor. Doesn't matter which band you're on, um, like sharp is the same, medium sharp, blunt, medium blunt, whatever they're called, they're, they're all the same Q factor. There is no tolerances, there is no non-linearities per band. The Q factors are completely consistent and completely precise. So we've done like the bells, okay, so let's start doing some shelves, right? Let's start doing some shelves. So as you can see, I've got low shelf, high shelf, Really easy to do. Again, once you've got um, your Q factor set, bump, bump, job done. Completely linear again. I've got a completely clean linear digital plugin and it can completely match with the same curves. Let's have a look at the phase. As you can see, look at the phase. There is no difference in the phase. No difference in the phase. There is nothing that separates the Waves RS56 from the Waves um, F6. There's no difference. The linear frequency response is the same and also the phase is the same. It's just a clean linear digital EQ. And to prove it's clean, I'll just quickly show you the harmonics. There you go. There's there's the harmonics. There is none. Actually, I find this hilarious. <laughs> Genuinely, the RS-56 is cleaner than the way the Waves F6. How is that possible? How can the Waves RS-56, right, a, a, a console, an EQ, an Abbey Road made in the 50s be cleaner than a clean digital linear EQ. It's just marketing fodder, isn't it? It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It's actually that simple. The seeing Waves F6. So for example, say if it's like one, 1056 kilohertz, right? I just have to type in 1056. Bang. It gets the exact, it gets me to the exact same spot. You can actually numerically just type it in, same as Waves RS-56. And it's complete. That's how linear the Waves RS-56. It's that precise. It's just, a, it's just a very clean digital linear EQ. And to be honest, guys, it really, really disappoints me. It's the exact same as Harrison. It's an absolute con. Like, and it's a, no one's even more annoying. I got conned. I bought it, right? Like, I think what people forget is I, people think I'm a Waves basher and stuff. I'm a fucking Waves owner and I've spent a lot of money with Waves. Any time a Waves plugin came out, I bought it. I bought nearly all the Waves RB Road stuff because I'm such a Beatles fan. And I got conned, I got lured in. I was just like, oh, okay, yes, yes, my credit card. Okay, whatever. And what I find worse is that I wouldn't have knew this 
unless I got plug-in doctor out and I tested this for myself. I seen the curves. I got Waves F6. I matched it for myself. I seen for myself how linear the curves were, how they could be matched. And to be honest, guys, if I'm buying a plug-in, I want to ensure that it's an analog style plug-in. I don't want to buy a plug-in I could recreate with a stock digital linear EQ. I don't want to be conned and wasting my money, right? Marketing hype is something that plugin developers created. This was all created and Waves were kind of the masters at it. You know what I mean? They got all the license and all the brand names and stuff. Um, but to give Waves their due, it's not many plugins that they've done it on. And it's not just acoustic that has implemented like non-linearities into their plugins, right? Think of um, Brainworks, right? So for example, let's think of Plugin Alliance, the Linda Letty channel, which you know, like you've got the TMT in there. And what the TMT does is the TMT like mimics tolerances of every channel and you can do it left and right. So you could have your left and your right slightly off from one another, okay? Because uh, another thing you need to remember um, about analog units is that it's, they're not as precise. So for example, right, you could have, say, even like a Marcelet, you can have like a GML 800 or something like that and like boost 250 and it boosts 260 or 270. Again, you, you can never ever, normally, and I've found in a lot of analog EQs, you can't, they're not precise, they're close and they give you a ballpark. I didn't get it at first. But I kind of get it. I kind of get it a little bit now. It's mental. It is. It's it's crazy um, how analog works, and I can understand why um, a lot of the analog guys wanted more linearity. This was something like <laughs> like if the if if um, FabFilter Pro Q3 um, came out in the sixties, the seventies, and the eighties. Trust me, that'd be getting heard about. <laughs> Hey, that'd be a hood on tour, right? I'm telling you, right? That'd be getting used and abused. People are like, oh, no, 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 no way. All those analog EQs, all those great analog units. Trust me, FabFilter would be getting used just as much as it would be today. They were screaming out for it. They were screaming out for more cleanliness. They were screaming out for more linearity, more consistency. Again, that's the beauty of like clean linear plugins. Now, don't get us wrong, right? There are a lot of units that were made very well and are pretty damn linear, are pretty damn linear, but but there's still elements of non-linearity in there. Many, many people might say, Paul, what's the difference, Paul? Is there really, can you really hear the difference in these slightly little different peaks and troughs and little non-linearities? I don't know. That, that's a hard one, I suppose. I, I couldn't say for sure. To be fair, I'd imagine them to be pretty close, but the phase is different, and that's, where, that's again, a massive part of the difference of what you're hearing is a difference in phase. Um, again, there's lots of different variables, saturation, harmonics. Non-linearity is a massive part of analog, a huge part of analog, and it's something that you need to realise it's, it's hard to achieve. The developers I've spoken to have told me, maybe in the future, when computers are more powerful, we will be at a stage where we can do it, and, and algos um, will beat convolution. Algorithms will be able to be just as non-linear and model more kind of precisely and be less CPU intensive than convolution like acoustic. It's all about whether those non-linearities, um, do they make an audible difference? Does it have an impact on the sound? And is it sometimes the difference between an analog emulation and a piece of hardware? So if you've liked the video, please like the video. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. There is tons of playlists. If you came for plug-in shootouts, there's a plug-in shootout um, playlist. There's an analog versus digital playlist. There's a, um, an audio geekness playlist. There's so much stuff on my channel. Okay, so thanks again for your time, guys. I do appreciate it as always. And I will see you next week on Mixing Wednesdays, where hopefully, I think I'll have two videos for you next week. All right, see you soon.